Okay, new video. Now it's time to <laughs> change outfit. <laughs> there we go. And this is the reason why you should buy women's clothing. Because women have so much nicer clothes than us guys do. <laughs> hey guys, it's Ball and Boda Doggo. And welcome back to Windsor Change. I think this is episode 24. Where we go through all the loyalty scenes with all of our friends. Uh, I, th I think there will be like five of them. Four Valessa, Pro, Ulrich, Howl, and Sovi. And hopefully we can go through all of them in this episode. Uh, unless, like I said last episode, they're long and we maybe just have get to do half of them. But we will see. Um, yeah, no further ado. Let's go. Oh, there was Damek as well. There are seven. Sorry, Damek. I thought I remembered everyone, but Damek is there as well. So we'll see, will we get to do everyone in this episode? We will see. Let's go from the left to the right. Though, I, I'm i gonna start with Pro, because I'm too scared that uh, I, I'm gonna fuck out the dating with all, any of the other characters and like lock in on someone. So I'm gonna start with Pro, and then we'll go left to right. <laughs> Pro leads me to Maseo's town square without saying much. I'm not sure what's going on, but he seems happier than usual. Things must be going well for him, so I hope it's something good. After a while, he rests his back against a nearby house. Tapping his foot, it looks like he's waiting for something. Okay, Monarch, you're not going to believe this. I got some information about my parents the other day. Ooh! After pulling a few strings, I was able to set up a meeting. With your parents? That's actually a huge deal. I'm really happy for him. As far as I know, it's just my dad. I, I think my mom was under the weather or something, but at this point, I'll take whatever I can get. I'm so excited! Ooh. <laughs> I'll finally get to ask him what happened. D do you think I have any uh, any brothers or, or sisters? Uh, wait, don't answer that. I'll keep my hopes low. Oh, okay. He has a huge smile on his face, and I can understand why. This is something he's been looking forward to for his entire life. The ability to meet his parent and find out why they abandoned him. I almost don't believe this is happening. For the last decade, I've had eyes and ears everywhere. People run around Maseo gathering information for me to sell. I prefer to do all the work myself, but anything extra is a huge benefit. I'm good at selling, so hmm. they provide the info, and then we share the profit. When we got back from Alarincia, one of them had a bunch of stuff to share. And one of them was the one piece of information I've been waiting to hear. My parents were alive Ooh. and living in Maseo all those years and they were so close. I bought the information from him myself. I paid more than I have for anything else in my life. Oh, wow. But you can't put a price on this kind of stuff, you know? My future and my heart is on the line. This is a big deal. I hope we don't have to wait too much longer. I'm nervous. So am I. <laughs> That much was made evident by his constant rambling. I press my back against the wall with him, and we wait together. We talk about random subjects, anything to pass the time, for now. But after a while, finding topics to discuss becomes a little harder. That's not because our bond is weak, but because we run out of topics. The time of the meeting approached, and then faded away. Nobody arrived. I guess he's running a bit late. It happens. I can't hold it against him. He smiles, and it's an incredible nervous smile. He knows deep down inside that his words may not be true. A couple of more hours pass, but I don't abandon his side. Not even once. Any moment now. Aw, bro. After a while, we slump down and sit on the ground. His naive hopes start to dissipate into a harsh realization. But I can tell that he doesn't want to admit it. So we continue to sit. As the sun sets, people start to retreat into their homes. I can tell that he's tired, and so am I. I close my eyes for a few moments. It wouldn't hurt to doze him off just for a little bit. I just need to make sure that I don't leave him. I wake a white later, unsure of the time. But it's dark. It must be the dead of night. Pro snores softly, with his head resting on my shoulder. Aww. I know that in his slumber, he doesn't have to face the facts. His dad never came. But why? 
Was he too afraid to follow through? Pro has a smile on his face. I can tell that he's still hopeful, even in sleep. But he can't sleep forever. He needs to wake up and face this. Giving him a soft nudge, he wakes up, but then my heart is broken. He thinks I woke him up because his dad arrived, and he looks around, ecstatic. But then he realizes that it's just me and him. His ears fall back, and he laughs, almost like he's not surprised. I knew that this would be hard for him to face, but he was abandoned again. I guess I should have expected this. He sighs and crosses his arms. You know, I thought I'd give him the option. He could come meet me when they were ready and willing. Other than that, my only option was to just march into their home. Of course, my courtesy just ends up stabbing me in the back. Hmm. He said he'd be here, Monarch. He said he would. Aww. And I trusted him! He growls and punches the nearby wall with a fit of rage. It's not fair! Aww, bro. He grunts in pain and stands there, panting. A few tears start to stream down from his eyes. Why don't they love me? Aww. I step forward and wrap my arms around him. He starts crying more and rests his head against my body. I just wanted a family. Mm. More than anything, I want to belong. It hurts so much. <laughs> they don't want me. Bro. <laughs> no. I want to know why they threw me away. It's all I've ever wanted to know. It's, it's why I do what I do. I don't know if I can live the rest of my life without knowing the truth. He starts to calm down, and soon enough, the tears fade. I can tell that he's super conflicted. He really wants to meet his parents. But if they don't want to meet him, there's really nothing he can do. It was cruel to schedule a meeting and then not follow through. Or maybe his mother needed attention. Under the weather could have many numbers of meanings, and not many of them good. Either way, it's evident that his pursuing the truth is causing him more harm than not. If he wasn't meant to know the truth, then perhaps he should focus on moving forward. After all, he had a loving family in the rebel. We would never abandon him like this. I just don't know what I should do. Let them go, Pro. You have a true family with the rebellion. Keep pushing to learn the truth. If they won't come to you, go to them. Oh! Chris! Ah! So it's either to get Pro to like find out where they live and go there or just give up. Ah, what the hell? Keep pushing to learn the truth, Pro. I'll tell him to not give up. If he could gain more info, he could pursue his parents. He's on the right track now, so he shouldn't give up. He's so close. Even if it doesn't end well, at least he'll finally know the truth. <laughs> I never even considered giving up. <sighs> Although I, I came close a moment ago. <laughs> this meeting was definitely a wake-up call. If they won't come to me, then I'll go to them. It might not end well, but at least I'd get some answers. Or maybe I can send one of my men to ask them a few questions. Thanks, Monarch. You're welcome, bro. He smiles at me. I'm glad that I could help him, even if it's only a little bit. So, should we get going then? I guess you have a lot of things to do. Given that, I'm really glad that you came with me. Of course. <laughs> I don't know how I would have handled this alone. Having you by my side... It makes me stronger. And if there's anything I need right now, it's strength. Mm. With that, we start to walk away from the town square. It's pain me to see him go through this. Nobody should feel abandoned. But at the end of the day, he had people like me to stand by his side and help. So no matter what happened, he'd never be alone. Yeah. So that was a loyalty scene, okay. But why is, why is there a cross up here? You have not earned Pro's loyalty. Huh? What? What? Okay, so this was the only only place that we had a choice. So instead of 
making him push through. Let's tell him that he has a family with the rebellion. I tell him to let go of his parents. He has a true family in all of his allies. Blood isn't what makes you family. It's love, acceptance and understanding. If his parents wouldn't give him that, then perhaps he should be abandoning them. Let them go? He seems surprised, like nobody has suggested this to him before. I know, you're right. I've tried, but it's really hard. What happened here today might change things, though. After everything I've tried, maybe this is the wake-up call I needed. Thanks, Monarch. He smiles at me. I'm glad I could help him, even if it's only a little bit. So, should we get going then? I guess you have a lot of things to do. Given that, I'm really glad that you came with me. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I would have handled this alone. Having you by my side, it makes me stronger. And if there's anything I need right now, it's strength. You have earned pros loyalty! Yes! <laughs> with that, we start to walk away from the town square. It pained me to see him go through this. Nobody should feel abandoned. But at the end of the day, we had people like me to stand by his side and help. Just yes. So no matter what happened, he'd never be alone. Yeah! Pro is loyal! Woo! <laughs> okay, now let's do Valessa then. Oh, this is a new place. We haven't been here. Valessa leads me through Mazeo to some sort of hidden cove area. There's a large ship and it looks like some sort of dock with no signs of life. Stashes of treasure lay about, and it's apparent that this place has been abandoned. Uh, after we returned, I got talking to the pirates. You know, to pick up any information on our parents. It turns out, this is their base of operations. Their HQ. <sighs> kind of funny, isn't it? We both ended up having HQs in Maseo. But, to be honest, that's where I'd like the similarities to end. The more I learn about them, the more I hate them. Aww. They kept running off to Mazeo and left us in Sales' hands. <laughs> now that I think about it, he raised us more than they ever did. I guess they were more interested in this life of piracy. <sighs> it's awful. Then I get why it was so weird for you to see to see Howl in Sales' body because he's been like a parent for you. She looks around the cove, taking in the environment. I wanted to come here with you to face the truth. Our parents were bad people. There's no denying it. They wanted this to be their legacy, rather than us. Aww. She starts to walk around the area, and I follow behind her. Look at all this junk they valued more than us. Weapons, money, more money, and lame scrolls. Maps to some far-off treasure and riches, I'm sure. Picking up a handful of coins, she throws them in a nearby water. Sorry for going off like that. It just makes me really angry. We idolized them for so long, thinking the world lost good people. But to realize that maybe the world is better off without them? It's hard. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, thanks for coming along with me. I just thought it would be good to do this together. I don't know how Fortin would handle it, if I'm honest. Yeah. She turns to face me with a hint of a smile on her face. You know, I realized I'm different from all of these rebels. They've been living oppressed in the shadow of the Triumvirate. It was never the triumvirate that held me back. It was always myself. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a person who can make my parents proud. I wanted to do what society demanded of me. I wanted to be perfect. But this is a real wake-up call. Nobody is perfect. We're all flawed at heart. To realize that and embrace it, I think that's all I needed to do. I feel like now I can 
be who I want and not who other people want me to be. <laughs> it feels like such a small thing, but a different perspective can change a lot, you know? That's a good way to look at it, Melissa. I am not. Well then, uh, wanna take a look around? If we can find anything to help us in Balteus, then it's not a total loss. I'm sure there's something around here that we can take along with us. Sure. She starts rummaging through various crates and sacks. I do the same as her, but find nothing of note, except money. It could help after war, but right now, we needed something more. Hey, look what I found! She pulls out a pair of daggers and starts inspecting them. I think I remember these. Back when I was a kid, I swear I saw them. That means they must have belonged to my parents. Or my mother, to be exact. Just an intuition, so I can't say for sure. But I'd be willing to bet that my hunch is correct. Did you find anything good, Monarch? About this money? Aside from those daggers, none of them was helpful. What do you say? Should I keep them? Might come in handy when we attack Balteus. Well, that was a good question, actually. She came here to move on from her parents. Taking the stuff would just be a constant reminder. On the other hand, maybe she could make them her own. It was hard to tell whether or not this would hinder her in the future. But with our final battle almost upon us, I'm afraid that I couldn't afford a mistake. And therefore I'm gonna quick save. <laughs> I'm quick saving this bastard. Keep them, Alessa. Make them your own. Leave them behind. You deserve to move on. Oh, come on. Come on. What should I do? What should I do? I guess we'll ask her to keep them? If it's, if she not, if she, she doesn't become loyal, I will reload. <laughs> Make them my own, huh? I think I like the sound of that. Okay, that sounds like... And I even got an achievement, so that should be the good thing, right? She puts the daggers on the leather straps on her back. Returning with a smile, she seems like she's ready to head home. Well, I guess now I need to focus on the important stuff. What kind of person do I want to be after this war is over? I'm no longer held back by anything, so I guess my dreams are the limit. She smiles and blushes softly. And as long as we're talking about dreams... Uh-oh. Taking a step forward places her hand in mine. I smile at her and give them a soft squeeze, which she returns. I never would have dreamed that we'd become this close. We've gone through so much together and, and become so strong. You're part of the reason I was brave enough to face my past like this. Aww. But with my past taken care of, I'd like to look toward the future. And... If there's one thing I want the most, it's for you to be a part of it. Well, you know, that? I keep thinking back to that dance we had. I feel so special. God. <laughs> but pro. <laughs> there were so many eyes on us, though. I felt kind of restricted. I mean, I wanted to kiss you. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Um. At the end of a dance, of course. I think it's tradition. Or something like that? Um, well, um... It's just that... Before she can finish, I step forward and slowly move my face towards hers. I stop halfway and wait for her to close the distance. Her face is bright red. When our lips touch together, it feels like if the world has stopped moving. This was our moment. Just the two of us. I move my head back, but let my hands find a way to her sides. She stammers and looks around the cave. Clearly embarrassed and shy. I guess that does it then. All this time, and I only had to ask. <laughs> I'm glad to finally know how you feel for sure. Okay, my, my, my character is polyamorous, okay? <laughs> she takes a deep sigh of relief, as if a massive weight was now gone. I totally understand. This was a big deal for her, and for me as well. Should we head back then? Yeah. I guess you have other things to tend to. Uh, truth be told, I needed this. Thank you. Yeah, so me, yeah, we got her, her loyalty thing. <laughs> but yeah, Vanessa, oh my god, you are cute, but I, 
my my heart is beating for pro but we'll see how this turns out <laughs> maybe i will do maybe i will have like a romantic thing with with Dominic as well since last time we talked he was talking about that as a date so <sighs> with that we're on our way out to the cove she faced her past in that moment i came out even stronger i have no doubts that she'd continue to grow into an amazing woman before we leave for good i turn back to look around once more these were where our parents conducted most of their business? That means that this is the closest I've been to them in decades. Goodbye. Woo! Valessa Loiti. Then it's Fortem. Ah, time to climb the great tree, I see. Fortem takes me back to Valley North, and we look at the Grand Tree. It makes sense that he wants to accomplish his lifelong dream before the final battle. With those metallic cloths that he found in Mazeo, I think that he could finally achieve what he wanted. And of course, he wanted me to achieve it with him. I'm grateful that he chose me, but I'm also a little worried. Is this really something that I could pull off, even with those tools? Well, I guess this is it. I can't leave for Balteus with any regrets. So I'm finally going to do it. I'll climb the Grand Tree. We'll climb the Grand Tree. And with someone like you, no less. Think they'll talk about this in the history books? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think anybody else has done this before. We are going to be the first. Here, you need to put these on like gloves. There's another pair that goes on your feet as well. After that, we just climb. We don't need to find footholds. Okay. Being able to create them ourselves? Now that's a good invention. I gotta give credit where credit is due. The Zayans know what they're doing. Don't tell anybody though. These might very well be under the trade ban. He gives me a quick wink. It's alright though, I won't tell anybody. It looks way taller than I remember. I'd try to give you some advice, but I don't have any. With those tools, this should be pretty easy. At least, I hope. You'll see. Just don't fall, Monarch. I don't know if you could survive something like that. I've fallen from way shorter trees and been in pain for months. She sure is great at instilling confidence. Well then, got everything ready? Let's find a good starting point and do this. But remember, it's a race, so no holding back. <laughs> I want to make sure that we both give it our all. No regrets. He enters a stance that implies that he's ready to begin. I nod to let him know that I'm ready, and assume the same stance. We make our way to the base of the Grand Tree and look up. This is the first time I realize how tall it actually is. Would we really be able to make it to the top? A doubt wells up within me, but I don't voice it. I bet I'll be the first one there. Oh, I'll catch you. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> With that said, he digs his claw into the tree and starts to climb. I watch him for a few moments before replicating his action to a T. After a few minutes of doing this, we're extremely far from the surface. Scared of heights? Make sure not to look down. I for one love the view. <laughs> this is part of why I do it. Hey, no fair! I was taking a breather! Didn't think you'd be the type to play dirty. <laughs> he laughs as we scale the tree at almost the same rate. I can't imagine doing this without those claw-like tools. In fact, they make it pretty easy. There's no risk of falling. It allows me to take a step back and admire Fortem's skill. He was climbing trees his entire life without this kind of aid. I suddenly appreciate his every stumble and fall, his every bruise. As we get higher and higher, we start to envelop in a canopy of leaves. We aren't quite high enough that they become red, but it's an impressive sight. It blocks us from seeing the village below us but it's beautiful to look at regardless. It really helps us solidify where we are. We are scaling the Grand Tree. Nobody has done this before, and it has been his dreams for decades now. However, due to his challenge, the competitive spirit starts to appear within me. At this rate we're going, I could very well beat him to the top. So are we gonna choose like if we wanna beat him or not? If this was a race, that would pretty much be the point. But if this was his dream, and he might deserve the moment, as we're near the top, what should I do? I want to let him win, but it depends. Will he realize that I let him win? And be like, and that will make him think like, Oh, you didn't give it your all. I don't trust you. I'm not loyal because you let me win. Um, I think I'm gonna let him win. Ah, achievement. That's one. <laughs> I decided to intentionally throw my progress. Fortin deserves to win. I feel like this is only fair. 
as we get higher, we reach the blood leaves on high. When we reach the final stretch, I fake a small stumble. Nothing to put myself in danger, just enough to cause a slight delay. After Fortem has gotten far enough up, I get myself back on track. It's not much more longer before we reach the top, and he's clearly victorious. He laughs and sits on a massive branch, big enough to support both our weight. I follow him up there and sits beside him, taking a huge sigh of relief. We did it. I can't believe we did it, Monarch! And of course, I had a feeling that I'd win. <laughs> Never think you can rise above the master! He smiles and inches a bit closer towards me as he sits on the branch. Look at that view. I know we can't see the village, but these leaves? I never thought I'd get to see them up close like this before. I've only ever seen them when they wilt and fall off. But being up here? And seeing them fresh? Wow. Mm -hmm. I wish I could take some with me. But I know I can't. Yeah, they're gonna wither. He runs his hand through some of the blood leaves, clearly in awe. You know, this doesn't feel like I thought it would. I thought it'd feel amazing, like I'd become a different person. But I feel just like I did before. I guess that's how things go, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh well, at least that's one more thing I can cross off my list. A bit anticlimactic, but I don't really know what I was expecting. Maybe it's like East Crown, just the allure of the unreachable. I, I guess maybe, yeah. He looks around the area one last time, admiring the view that he may never see again. Well, should we get back down to the surface? I don't want to waste much time up here. We're busy and all that. It means a lot to me that we could share this moment. I'll never forget it. Don't worry about it. With that, he starts to climb back down. I follow after him and make our way to the surface. It feels weird being down here after being so high up. So, what's next on the agenda? You know what? Never mind. You do you. I'll be around if you need me for any reason at all. Like, like a war? Would you be up for that? Attacking the Triumvirate in Baltius? He walks away with a big smile on his face. I guess a dream of his came true on that day. When we got to Baltius, he had no regrets. Woo! And yay! Three down! Four more to go! Gonna jump over Solvi and do these three and then finish with Solvi. Uh, so now, Ulrich. I stand alone in my room, swinging the blade from side to side. Everything feels different than it did back at the start of my journey. When I first touched the blade, I could barely even hold it. But now, I'm starting to mastering it. I'm able to make it my own. However, just as I think that, the blade disappears from my hand. Ulrich laughs and I turn around. I didn't even notice his com I didn't even notice him come in. Sorry, it's just an old prank I used to pull on Sylvie. I take the blade from him when he least expected it. I guess it has a time and place. Sorry if I startled you. Ah, uh, it's fine. <laughs> he swings the blade a few times before handing it back to me. I shake my head. He didn't startle me. It was actually kind of funny. I came here because I assumed you wanted answers. Learning I was the Grand Inquisitor must have been a shock. I'm glad you have a clear head. You could tell that I've changed. I mean, I'm not the shock. I was suspecting it, but it was it was nice to see that I was right. I nod. But you deserve to know what I was like before I changed. In order to hide from my past, I haven't exactly been honest. But I wasn't lying to you. It was more like I was lying to myself. In a way, it sort of makes sense. I just decided to let him talk. He approaches me and sits down on the bed. I sit beside him. There was a man named Ulrich in Alarinthian legend. He pledged to change the nation, just like I always have. The barbaric way of running things was too much for him to bear. A lot of the specific details have been lost to time, but it goes like this. He was young, and his parents wanted the same thing, so they fought for it. They died in the arena, and Ulrich couldn't handle it. He ran away from the nation. But he pledged to return one day, and change Alarinthia for good. The ideals passed on to him by his parents still live on to this day. That's likely what inspired Vivian to launch his own insurrection. Of course, the story that's handed down is never really the truth. To put it bluntly, I'm the same Ulrich. It's been so long, it's hard to believe. I'm sure you had your suspicions, mm -hmm. so I just came here to confirm them for you. Thank you. It actually is a bit hard to believe, but I let them continue. My parents hated the way the nation was run. 
They passed that hatred down onto me as I grew up. But they got older. Before too long, they were decrepit. They could never change anything. So the burden was passed on to me, a rising star in the Colosseum. I never fought for leadership, just regular tournaments, but I never lost. One day, I guess the Triumvirate noticed how strong I was. They approached me. They told me that if I left Alarinthia behind, they'd train me. They'd give me the power to return one day and change everything. I was young and naive. I agreed without hesitation. I wanted to serve our gods. But before they accepted me, I had to prove that I was truly ready. Serving them would involve leaving everything behind. It'd be a fresh start. They devised a test for me, to make sure that I was truly ready to devote myself. They, uh... He gulps, like he's afraid to tell me what happened next. They made me kill my parents. No! I... No! I... What? Oh my god! He looks down at the floor. In their eyes, it told them that I was truly ready to leave my old life behind. Because I was young and stupid, it made a twisted kind of sense in my head. I did what they told me to. But as they died, I told them I was making their dream a reality. Oh my god. I was caught and exiled into the desert. That's how I became a Sixer. I survived the trials, was branded with this tattoo, and showed my worth. Their test was over. They took me over to Balteus and made me their servant. I served them by weeding out insurrections and ensuring they remained in power. After what seemed like an eternity, they came up with the idea of giving me an apprentice. That's when I met Sovi. They preyed on his weakness and naivety much like they did mine. We worked together, traveling the world and killing the Triumvirate's enemies. Eventually I realized that they weren't good people. I defected and joined the rebellion. If the timeline seems confusing, it's because it is. We are talking about millennia here. Wow. He lives for millennia? They gave us the gift of immortality. Well, they called it a gift. We would never succumb to old age, and mortal wounds would easily fade. I felt unstoppable, like I was the king of the world. Nothing could get in my way. He shrugs. Embar- He shrugs. Clearly embarrassed at admitting such a fact. But after a while, I realized it was a curse. It's crazy how much your perspective can shift so fast. Taking the dream of immortality into real life, it became a nightmare. Yeah, I can imagine. With a slight scoff, he stands up and turns around to face me. They knew what they were doing. They were creating slaves. Using that blade, they gave us what they deemed eternal life. I know we can use the blade too, but we can't reverse it. That should have been the first sign. I thought we did this willingly, but we really had no choice. It was all or nothing, an ultimatum, the biggest red flag. I've had this curse for far too long. It's made me a bad person. I no longer seek love because everybody I love is just lost to time. Aww. I no longer seek happiness because it's never permanent. Never. Oh, but maybe the tri killing the triumvirate will kill this curse for you. These fleeting emotions may mean a lot to you, but not me. It's an endless cycle of building myself up only to be cut back down. I thought I'd be like this until the world rotted away. Until I met you, that is. Oh, he smiles. Now there's somebody else who can use the blade. Somebody to lift this curse and give me my life back. My life belongs to your cause, Monarch, not theirs. Yeah, let's uh, remove that thing from you. So please, give me that life. Then, after that, I can give it to you. Oh, so now it's gonna be like, Oh, but I could use him if he's immortal. That would good be good for the war and the attack on Baltia. So maybe we should keep him immortal for that. Ah... Uh. I could remove the curse that Triumvirate put on him? That would be good. But then he'd be weak and vulnerable. No doubt the source of his strength is partly due to his immortality. If I remove it, he could perish during the attack on Baltius. 
and easily. It would be removing the biggest advantage, and I'm not sure what to do. He looks at me, awaiting my response. I don't know what to say next. What do I do? Well, good thing it's not you deciding, but it's me deciding. I'm deciding that we will help him, and we will remove the curse from Ulrich. I tell him that I will remove the curse. His face lights up like I've never seen before. Thank you. So much. You're welcome. I nod. <laughs> I grab the blade and try to figure out what to do. One thing was sure. He'd soon have his life back. He would have the freedom to grow old and finally find peace. And before he leaves my room, I make sure that his dreams become a reality. So did did we do it now? Is he is he immortal now? Or is he immortal now? Hmm. Okay. Uh, time for Damek. And that makes me wonder if that means that Sovi is also immortal. Will he continue being immortal, or will he also ask us to remove the immortality? And in, if he is, does that not mean Halen is also immortal? How do we kill Halen then if he's immortal? Ah! Anyway, Domek. Domek leads me to the town square of Maseo. Because of our recent conversations, I know what's going on. He's taking me to the spot where he lost his mother during the occupation. It must be hard on him. I can see him shaking as he walked through the town. But if facing this painful memory helped him move on, it was my duty to assist him. In the coming storm, he needed to be resolute. Helping him would help all of us. I can't thank you enough for coming with me, Monarch. There's not many people I trust this much. I'm really glad I have you. Until today, I've only had dreams about doing this. But now, I'm strong enough. Yay! <laughs> and honestly, it's all because of you. I give a little credit to my near-death experience, but not all of it. <laughs> You've grown into a capable leader and led us all down the right path. Yeah, that's, that's me. He smiles, and I smile back at him. It was nice to receive some support after all we've been through. Being the monarch wasn't very easy, but it's a weight that I had to carry. We walk through the town square taking back alleys for occasional shortcuts. After a while, we end up at a large open area. I'm surprised they haven't built shops here. This is where town meetings are held. They don't happen very often, but they need a big open space. There's a lot of people in Museo, so everyone deserves a chance to attend. I'm surprised they haven't built shops here. Soon after that, however, his tone becomes more serious. A lot of bodies in one place. That's just what they needed during the occupation. Oh. This is where it happened, Monarch. The, the stuff with my mother. I nod at him as we take steps closer towards the center. You may notice the crimson tint on the ground here. This is where they piled the bodies during the attack. So much blood. So much carnage. Permanently stained. Oh. So they, they killed all these people to make their soldiers? The honor guard? Just like the memories in my head. As hard as I try, I can't just scrub those off either. Every other night, I wake up in a cold sweat, crying. Mm -hmm. I feel the lingering touch of her hand against mine. Then, the moment she goes away, it makes me feel empty inside. There's nothing left to feel, except all those corpses pressed against me. Domek. A warmth that slowly dissipates, leaving me cold and alone. I had to stay under them until things died down. Almost a whole day. The moment I could, I got out and took her pendant along with me. It's all I have to remember her by, but perhaps that's why I can't let it go. How can you move on from something when you remind yourself of it every day? Mm. Just the thought, of course. But after all I've been through, at least it's a thought with merit. He holds up his hand and shows me the pendant that he's holding. He seems to carry it with him everywhere. Of course, as he suggested, that means that it also carries the memory along with him. Let's keep moving. I'll show you exactly where it happened. Just stay close to me, okay? 
yeah, okay. This is hard. Absolutely. I nod and start to follow him as he ventured deeper into the open area. Into the open area. A podium rests at the center, likely where they hold these meetings from. Soon, I picture what this place would look like during the occupation. I cringe. After a while, Domek stops dead in his tracks and looks down at the ground. His body language and reaction tells me that this is exactly where his trauma happened. I position myself right behind him and wait for him to speak. I couldn't rush him now. Well... <laughs> this is it. Oh, man. He clutches a pendant close to his chest. Would you sit with me, Monarch? We might be here for a while after all. Of course, Domek. He sits down on the ground, attracting stares from a few passers-by. I join him, carrying more of his well-being than the judgment of those around. Looking down at the ground, he places the pendant down and moves it around slightly. It was right here, I think. You never really forget, you know. I hope it's not weird to sit here with me. No. I shake my head and let him do what he needs to do. Come here to face what happened. I needed to do this. But now I'm not sure what to do next. I mean, with the pendant. Do I leave it behind? Just like my memories, or do I hold on? That was a good question, and I can tell that it's bothering him. I'm sure someone will just come around and steal it anyway. Mm. But maybe that's for the best. It can be somebody else's burden. I think I've grown tired of carrying it around for my entire life. However, I also don't want to regret doing this. I could be acting rashly in the face of our final battle. It wouldn't be the first time somebody has done that, you know. I nod and let him speak. Look at me. The world is at stake and I'm worried about this. You know what? With everything you've done for us, I trust you. What do you think I should do, Monarch? Take it or leave it? I think we should do a quick save. And uh, yeah, then we see what, uh, what we think. Besides, I'm a bit biased here in almost every regard. Your head is more clear than mine, so it's worth a shot. What do you think I should do here? What's the right choice? Keep it. Honor her memory and her life. Leave it. Move on from these painful memories. I mean, yeah, sure you honor it. Honor her memory by keeping it. But you've been keeping it for like, I don't know, 10, 20 years. So I think it's time to, to let go. You're right. That was the one. Yeah. I think this is something I need to do. It'll be hard, but I need to move on. I can't hold myself back. We're fighting to liberate our world and push forward, right? It's a bit hypocritical for me to do the opposite to myself. I hope whoever picks it up goes on to take good care of it. It means a lot to me. And I hope it can do that for others, too. You are kind, Dominic. He places his hand on the pedant, touching it one last time. It's time for me to let go, Mother. This was always yours. I was just holding on to it for a while. I'll miss you always, but your sacrifice for me will never be forgotten. Mm -hmm. He smiles and lets go of the pendant. It's shimmering in the sun. We both stand up and turn back in the direction we came from. Well then, should we get going? I guess. I nod. And we start walking back the way we came. But Dominic looks much happier and content than he did earlier. Perhaps the event of today would give him a clear mind in the future. As our final battle was imminent, we would find out rather sooner than later. Okay, um, then it's Howl time. Howl enters my quarters, carrying an aura of purpose with him. After East Crown, I know that something big has been on his mind. We were so close to the final battle, it was probably time for us to talk. Monarch, we must speak with you. It's about our upcoming attack on Baltius. At least we think it is. Things have become complicated. Complicated? What, what do you mean? We may be walking into a trap. This may be all part of the Triumvirate's plan. Plan? What plan? Take their blade. Feed it power and then bring it back. This may be what they've wanted all along. We've seen it. Everything we've done. 
has only made their weapon stronger. Please tell me what you're thinking, Hal. They let us steal their blade. They wanted it to happen. They knew we'd bring it here, feed it death, and tap into the idol. But not only that, we're bringing it right back to them, stronger than ever. You may think we are wrong, that this is just a foolish theory, but we must only look into the visions to realize the truth. That, combined with some of your actions, like clockwork. What do you mean by clockwork? It's almost like sometimes you have no other choice. You say or do things that pushes down a certain path, but more often than not, that path leads us to death. Oh. How convenient, then, that the blade feeds off of death. In your hands, it has gotten more powerful than ever before. But what force, what invisible hand, guides us down this path? I, that would be me. <laughs> this is... It's quite simple, but we were always looking at it the wrong way. Venturing into East Crown and seeing that ship made us realize that, when we approach things from a different angle, it all made sense. Perhaps you could be starting making sense to me, then? We've been struggling with visions of these different pasts. They seem to come out of nowhere and complicate things. Until recently, we only had to process visions of the future. He crosses his arms. At least, that's what we thought. I'll take a step forward. Interested to see where he's going with this. But now we realize we've never seen the future at all. It's impossible to see what has not yet been written, but it is easy to see what has already happened. Yeah? Now he's lost me. These visions of different pasts aren't as out of place as we thought. You were told you had visions of the future and chose to believe that fact, but they are not visions of the future. They, too, are simply different pasts. Oh... What? The key to all of this is the Blade of Exodus. It's a constant in every vision, but the power within it varies even when it shouldn't. There are inconsistencies. Even if we have a vision of the same situation, the power inside the blade is different. Okay. The Triumvirate has some sort of dominion over time. That much is clear. They possess the ability to grant their subjects eternal life, like Ulrich and Sovi. We need to operate under the assumption that this ability can be used in other ways. Uh-huh. He eyes the blade on my back. Mainly, in a way that could be used to strengthen the Blade of Exodus, they could create a cycle full of death and despair that we are unable to break. When the cycle reaches an end, they could revert time and gather that power all over again. Oh... The visions of the future you thought you were having, they aren't what you thought. We believe they are visions of cycles in the past. Perhaps cycles oh. where we have perished. Did your visions of the future involve your death in any way? Think about this, Monarch. Now that he mentioned it, they did. I was stabbed by Solvi in the vision that started all of this. And after touching the blade, my series of vision ended up with me getting stabbed. That's odd. I tell him these stories, and he smirks. It seems that I'm only confirming his outlandish theories. Those were visions of past cycles, Monarch. Cycles where we failed. When we look at it like this, these different pasts make perfect sense. We've been looking at them all wrong, that is, until just recently. It seems that we retain some prior knowledge from these cycles. Perhaps that is why we act in certain ways as if we have no options. In the back of our mind, we're pushing ourselves in the same direction. Cycles? Directions? Please explain. We think the Triumvirate is manipulating time. They are doing this in order to make the Blade even stronger. The occupation, the formation of the Rebellion, and the attack in the tunnels. All of those casualties simply serve to give the Blade more power. We have no doubt that many will perish when we assault Baltius as well. But when the time comes, they can simply make it happen all over again. Oh, this is almost too much to comprehend. It makes sense when you think about it. 
especially with these tunnels. Those suits of armor knew exactly how to fortify this place for your army. They must have retained their knowledge and adapted each and every time. But only one question remains unanswered. Why? Why do they want to make this blade even stronger? What is their endgame? What do they desire? It is very possible that we are walking into a trap. Hmm. That is, unless the blade has enough power to defeat them. Their plan, if it's as I expect, is a double-edged sword. What do you mean? An infinite cycle created specifically to power the blade. There must be a cycle, a prime cycle, where we have the power to defeat them. A point where the blade is strong enough for us to win, but not yet strong enough for them. Okay. All we can do is hope that we've reached that cycle. The power in that blade is immense, but isn't enough. Hopefully you understand what we are trying to say. I think so. He's trying to tell me that we were trapped in some sort of time loop? A loop that the Triumvirate fashioned in order to give the blade power? And not only that, but I never saw the future. I only saw fade past endeavors. It's hard to believe, but death has definitely followed me and my allies. If their goal was to feel the blade with power, then they had certainly succeeded. But how far back does this cycle go? Could it reach as far back as the occupation? Wait a minute. Attack Mazeo, kill innocent and incite the rebellion. Attack the rebellion, provoke them into attacking your home, and then destroy them. With what Howl said, it almost does seem likely that we were walking into a trap. This, this can't be! The reason we see these things is because of the energy within us. It makes us sensitive in a way that others are not. We are both special, but I don't think visions are the only benefit of this power. There is more. Perhaps you see a flash of events that are happening elsewhere. Perhaps you can relive a conversation that has already happened. These echoes of past cycles manifest themselves in many ways. But when we look at it this way, everything makes sense. Everything has an explanation, and nothing is left up in the air. The only question is, do you believe us? Do you think we are correct? I think we are correct to quicksave. I don't know, I think it's all too extravagant to be true. I believe you, Hal. It makes everything seem more clear. Uh, that one. Good. Ah. We knew you would see the truth of things. This was an impossible matter to discuss with anybody else. We are special. And now we finally understand the reason why. Yeah. He turns to leave, but tilts his head back to address me one more time. I guess he wanted to leave no stones unturned before our attack on Baltius. The Triumvirate is up to something. That much is clear. If it aligns with our theory, at least you will be able to act. Getting caught off guard would damage us beyond repair. That is not something we want our monarch to endure. Be prepared for anything, for the enemy will stop at nothing. If you can do this, then perhaps our victory will be more likely. With that said, he sees himself out of my room. That all came out of nowhere, and I'm not sure how to react. But one thing was clear. There was so much we didn't know. But would we learn the truth in Baltius? Or would we even make it that far? I don't know. I start to feel uneasy, even with all of this new knowledge. Could we really have fundamentally wrong about everything? Well, you were already wrong about um, the spirits or all when you like the whole life. So I mean, the, all of these could also be wrong. As I go about my business, it's impossible to shake that thought out of my head. Okay, now and finally, Sovi. Oh. I have never been here before. Sovi leads me to a boat and takes me on a short voyage. I have no idea where we are going and our destination surprises me. Are we going where he grew up? It's not a place that I've seen on any map and it looks unlike anything I've ever seen before. It looks like an old cowboy town. I follow behind him, unsure of where we'll even end up. After a while he turns to face me, so I ask him for an explanation. I trusted him enough to follow him here, but I had my limits. I know that we're almost at the end, Monarch. 
It won't be much longer before we arrive on Baltean soil. So, it only makes sense that I show you where everything began. Everything? He just just broadly at everything behind him. I come from this backwater town, born and raised. It was wiped off the map after all the villagers were murdered. Given time, it might have even become the fifth nation of Alestia. Oh. But that was long ago, and nobody remembers this place. My parents were in charge of the area. They were incredibly wealthy. They had a force of men working the mines, cheap labor, and big profits. It seems like Sylvia has finally opened up to me. That was important. I needed to know that he could be trusted. And if things went well, his loyalty to our cause would be confirmed. As their son, they had me oversee all of this labor. It was my job to make sure everybody hit their goals. I performed admirably and put my foot down when needed. He walks towards the nearest house and put his hand on it. Taking a loud breath, I can tell that he's reliving unpleasant memories. Everything was going well, until the truth came out. The people who raised me weren't my parents. Aww. Not even close. They killed my parents while I was an infant and took over this town. Aww. Raising me as their own, our relationship was built on a lie. I was serving killers and usurpers. When I found out, I felt nothing but rage. They stole this land and the lives of its rightful rulers. Such an injustice. The hand that he was resting on the house slowly turns into a clenched fist. I don't know what came over me, to be honest. I killed everybody. Oh. My so-called parents and all of the workers. I was lied to by those who swore they loved me. I couldn't take it. By rule of inheritance, in that moment, this town became mine. But there was nobody else, and I was all by myself. I no longer wanted to live. I took myself to the cliff's edge and thought about throwing myself into the ocean. Aww. He turns back to face me, and I can see how sad he really is. That's when Ulrich found me. Aww. He made sure I didn't do anything stupid. I don't know how he came across me when he did. I thought it could be Providence. But he saved me, and I told him everything. Instead of scolding me, he praised me. I was shocked. I expected to be dragged to the nearest prison. But he took me right to the triumvirate and told them my story. That's when they wanted me to become his apprentice. I accepted. Ah, oh, because uh, Ulrich already killed his parents and I, uh, now he saw someone who killed his own parents and we're like, ah, oh, I like you. <laughs> My desire for justice was something they wanted on their side. But I no longer fought for my home village. I fought for all of Alestia. I swore an oath to them that I would always fight for the rulers of this world. At the time, I believed it was them. But learning the truth of the monarchy, it just opened old wounds. I saw the triumvirate in a new light, much like I saw my so-called parents. Ah. Once more, the desire for justice rose to the forefront of my mind. You may think my allegiance changed and that it was a sudden shift, but it's not true. I've always fought for the same thing. It's just that sometimes the tables need a little turning. He crosses his arms and seems to be done talking now. He leads me further into the village and I follow, trusting him more. We eventually end up at a large building, one that served as a town hall. You may notice the blood stains, but don't worry. I threw all the bodies off a cliff with Ulrich. <laughs> You won't be seeing anything gruesome, I can assure you. But, thank you. 
What an odd way to put my mind at ease. This is where my parents lived. I was never really allowed in. I guess I should stop calling them my parents. They were more like captors. I longed to see the world, but I obeyed them out of a feeling of loyalty. I slaved away. Mm. Sometimes I'd sneak into my father's office and peel the stamps off of his letters. They were incoming letters, so it's not like they had any use. I started to collect them. I stuck them to my bedroom wall and told myself that one day I'd go and see those places. Aww. One day, I wanted to be free. He lets out a loud sigh. I thought I was free when the triumvirate took me in. But it turns out I just traded one form of bondage for another. Shackles moved from my wrists to my heart. I don't know which is worse. Hmm. He holds out the hand close to his heart. They pressed the blade against my chest and gave me some of its power. It allowed me to use it as my own and gave me what they deemed eternal life. Ulrich grew to see this as an awful curse, but I embraced it. And to this day, I still do. Oh, okay. I see myself as a defender. I want to protect the reign of Alestia's true rulers. If the monarchy is restored to power, I will protect you and all of your descendants. Oh. You have my word, and you know why I served the enemy. My virtue was simply misplaced. I see. But now it rests with you, the true heir to the throne of Alestia. And that is where it shall remain, as long as I've proven my loyalty to you. Knowing everything that you do, do you trust me to protect you in battle? Uh, yes, I trust you now. You've earned it. Thank you very much, Monarch. I knew I picked the right way to tell you the truth. If we did this anywhere else, it might have fallen flat. He smiles, and I can tell that he's extremely relieved. I needed to get this off my chest before our attack on Balteus. Not knowing whether I had your trust, it was too much. We're comrades now, though, and I'm no longer worried. With that, it seems like our business here is done. The choice to trust me with his past and confidence in me meant a lot. None of my comrades had to carry their burdens alone. We were in this together. Let's get back to Mazeo, alright? I'm sure there's lots to do before the end. Thanks for joining me, but I think we need to leave. We start walking back the way we came and head to our boat. This place was wiped off the map. I had no idea that it existed. That makes me wonder just what else it work could be hiding. Before we get to the boat, I look back at the town, one last time. After the war was over, maybe we could rebuild this place and grow it. A new nation, with new rules. If we had the opportunity, we should seize it. We start to sail away and leave this place behind us for now. But I know Sophie better than I did before, and that could only bring good. He was carrying a weight on his shoulders, and he was no longer there. Now all of them are loyal! Yay! So you know what? That's a perfect place to end this episode! <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me! And if you want to support me as well, you know what to do. Patreon link and description, uh, subscribe, like the video, Discord. Uh, I, I love you all, so <laughs> take care guys! And remember that you are loved and appreciated, and you should be proud of who you are, because I want to see you in the next episode. Bye! He is...
he holds up his hand. We hold. 